It's time for an episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today we will continue our discussions about character devices and I will show you how you can implement an open and a release function for a character device. So let's go. As you can see here I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and the first thing I will do is I will navigate into my Linux driver tutorial source folder. So in here every kernel module I've created for this series has its own folder. And as a base for today's video, I will use the hello cdef kernel module. And I will create a new folder here, we'll call open release cdef. And let, let's jump right into it. So what's in this folder? We have a readme which gives you some information about this kernel module. If you're seeing this on my GitHub repository, we have the C source file for our kernel module and we have a make file to build the kernel module. And the first thing I will do here is I will open up the hello cdev.c kernel module and let's take a look at it. So this is a very simple kernel module which registers a character device for us and the exit function unregisters it again. So what this function register character device does is it creates us a character device, it's allocating a device number for us it's binding the character device to the device number and that's basically it. We have set this first argument here to zero and this means the function should search for a free device number in the kernel and use this device number. This label here will appear in proc devices and the last argument is a pointer to the file operations we want to support with this character device. So let's take a look at the file operations. We are only supporting the read function here. And if read is called for a character device, we want to execute the myread function, which is up here. And all we are doing here in the myread function is we are printing out one line to the kernel's lock. But today we don't need the read callback because we only want to um, open and close the file. So I will delete it here and also in here. Okay. And in my last episode of this series of tutorials, I've shown you how you can use proper logging in the Linux kernel's log. So by using the PR error macro function, basically what I can do is I can highlight this um, line here as an error and I want to highlight this line here as an info. Okay, now we can start implementing our um, open and release function and therefore let's take a look at the Linux kernel sources and see how this struct file operation looks like. So here I'm at bootlin.com to browse the sources of the Linux kernel and here we can see our struct file operation. And these are all file operations which are supported. And here we can see we have a file pointer for the open callback function and we have a file pointer for the release callback function. So let me copy this um, function pointer here because it's, it's giving me the information I need for implementing um, the callback function. So I will create a new function, um, a static function from the type or with the name myopen. This function has two arguments. The first is a pointer to a struct inode, I will call inode. And the second one is a pointer to a struct file, which I will call file p or file pointer. And the return value of this function is an integer, so zero on success or a negative error code else. Okay, and now let's take a look at these two arguments of the function. So the struct inode is a kernel structure to represent a file. Over this inode structure, we can get back the major and minor device number of the opened device file. The struct inode has some other fields, but basically only the major and minor device numbers are very important for us driver programmers. And let me show you how we can get the major and minor device number. So I will add a new info line to the kernel's lock and here I will print out the major and the minor device number of the currently open file. And in order to get these numbers I can use the macros i major and passing the inode pointer 
and I minor and passing the inode pointer to. So that's how to get the major and minor device number out of this inode struct here. Okay, and the next argument is from the type struct file. So let's take a look at the struct file and how it looks like in the Linux kernels um, code. So here we are, here we have the struct file. This struct rep represents an open file in the Linux kernel. So this structure or an object of the structure is created when we are opening a file and before we are calling the open callback function and it's destroyed after we have called the release function. So this object which is passed here only lives as long as the file is opened. We have a lot of fields here, but I will only discuss the most important ones. The first one is this F mode field here. So over the F mode, we can read back the permissions given to this file. For example, if you're allowed to read it or if you're allowed to write it and so on and so forth. But one important thing, when we are implementing a read or a write callback, we don't have to check this flag here or this field here and abort if the permissions are not set. No, before the, a read or a write function is called, it's checked if the permissions are there to read or write and if not, the callback function we have specified in our driver is never called. But sometimes it can be also useful to see the file permissions we have passed to um, our character device file. Then this year's struct file operations looks familiar and yes, this is exactly a pointer to this um, fops struct we have defined here. So this struct contains the file operation supported for our device file. Okay, what else do we have? This f flags here is the flags which we have passed to the open function in user space. Of course, you can also read them back over F mode, and this is the recommended way, but you can also find them here. Then, the next interesting thing is this void pointer to private data. So by default, this pointer is set to null, but if you want to associate some data to an open file, you can use this pointer for doing so. When we will talk about dynamical memory allocations, we will use this pointer and allocate some memory for every open file. But this is something we will do in a separate video. And the last thing I want to show you here is this fpos. fpos basically gives you your, or the, your current position in the open file. So normally by default this should be set to zero, but when we are calling read and write this position will be increased. Okay, so I would say maybe let's print out some of the flags here. So I want to print out the um, file position here. This should be a long, long integer. Okay, um, pause. Then I will print out the um, the permissions and maybe let's format this as an hex value here and I will also print out the flags which were set here. Okay and now in order to indicate that opening the file was successful I have to return zero else a negative error code. Okay, so much for the open callback. Now let's also implement the close callback or the release callback. The arguments are the same. We will return zero to indicate releasing or closing the file was successful. And all I will do here is I will print out an info line to the kernel's lock. Okay. And here in my file operation struct, I have to assign the open pointer with my open and the release pointer with my release. Okay, that should be it. Let me try to compile this kernel module. Okay. 
This is looking good. And now I have to write a small ctest application to open and close the file. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is I have to include some headers. So I will include standard IO, standard lib. Um, I need unistd.h for open and close. And I need function control for the flags being associated with yeah, with my character device. Okay, so here I need a file descriptor and I will call open. And maybe let's add some arguments here. So let's do it the following way. The first argument passed to this program is the file which should be opened and closed. So in case um, the argument count is smaller than two. Need the file to open as an argument. I will print out this message here and I will return from this program. But if I have passed an argument, I will open it here. Maybe the first time with read only permissions. And in case this is smaller than zero, an error occurred. But in our case, there never should occur any error. Okay, and then I will close the file again. And maybe let's open the, um, this file here some, some more times, but with different permissions. Um, maybe read write permission and oh sync and maybe let's do it one more time with some other permissions let's do write only and no block for example and down here we'll return zero yes that should be basically it let me compile this program. Okay, here I've made a typo. It should be this NMP must be changed. Non block. Okay. Okay, here I've misspelled the flag, but now it's working. Okay, the first thing I will do is I will load my kernel module. And then I will open, uh, I will start gmux and I will open a second window to follow the kernels log. Okay, then I need to create some, oh, I forgot one important thing, sorry for that. I need to check which device number we have used here, so it's 236. 36. So the next thing I will do is I will create some um, device or some device files. So dev c dev or hello zero character device major and minor device number. And let's also create something with the minor device number 10 here. Um, c dev test. And now let's open def hello zero here. Okay, so we see a lot of stuff. So first the minor and major number device number here is zero. The um, file position is zero, which is also no, no, not such surprising. Then here we can see our permissions, our flags, and we can see here they are different for the various modes which we choose and here file is closed yeah so here we also um, print so yeah the close the open is called three times and closing is open three times okay but now if I want to do the same thing with hello 10 you can see the minor device number has changed but the rest is quite similar
Okay, cool. So that's how to implement the open and the release callback for a character device file. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash Jonas for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.